Hello everyone, I'm Mark Snodgrass, and today I wanted to go over how to do rolling averages in Domo using Magic ETL, as well as how to kind of de-emphasize some of the data that's maybe too new and not really ready to be relied upon yet. Uh, you can do that in a multi-line chart. So let's uh, get started. So here is my magic ETL data flow. And you'll see here, important thing is to first grab your Domo calendar. This is found in the Domo dimensions uh, connector. You choose the calendar data set and it's really useful as dates uh, going back uh, very far and then also into the future. And then it's got to break it broken down into uh, lots of different uh, data segments about it. We're going to just really rely upon the date field because it's got um, a row for every date uh, that there is. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is kind of uh, restrict it to just being historical dates. So I don't need the future dates in this in that calendar data set. So I'm using the formula field to say, hey, where the date is less than or equal to the current date. Uh, so that will uh, bring that back down that data set a little bit smaller and then here i'm then i only want that date column so then i'm just kind of down to one column with that data set and then i'm going to set a constant here that i can join here in just a minute but i usually call it join key and then set a value of one then with my data that i have um, i've got just some claim data we're going to do a, some counts on it and create rolling averages off of it but I've got different uh, lines of business. So the first thing I need to do is get a distinct list of lines of business. So an easy way to do that is with the group by tile and using, hey, there's my line of business. This would be like essentially your series that you might put in a line chart typically, and then just aggregate it on something. You can, I'm gonna really discard this field here in a minute, but that just gives me a distinct list of lines of business that I have. Then I'm also going to do a constant on here, that same one, this join key. And then I'm going to do an inner join. I'm going to do it on this um, join key column. So one equals one, which is going to give me a row for every line of business for every date in that data set. So you'll see here, starting with January 1st, we've got a row for each line of business in here. And then January 2nd, starts and we've got a row for each line of business. So each row, each date uh, has an entry for each line of business, gonna be key here. And so then this other group by, I'm grouping by a date in the data set, uh, when that claim occurred and then the line of business <clears throat> and then creating an aggregate here as well. So how many 11 claims for workers comp occurred in August 1st, 1985. Uh, and on September 23rd, 1985, there were 10. So we're getting those counts in here that we're gonna use in our uh, to create our rolling averages off of. So then in this join tile, we're now gonna join on the date field from up here from our calendar data set against the date of event and also on the line of business. And we're gonna do a left join with this. So we're gonna get all of our dates that we've got. So we're not gonna miss any days in the calendar. And we're gonna do that for every event. And then we're gonna get those counts where they did occur on each of those dates for each line of business. So then we're gonna get all of these in here. You know, this preview doesn't always order it the way uh, it makes it easy to determine, but tested it out and it works. So then once we've got that join, and I think it's also maybe worth pointing out here. I just do a little cleanup. I drop some columns that I'm not going to need uh, further on. So from this claim counts tile, I only really need that um, claim count. I don't need the other fields. So I've got the, those dates in the line of business from the main, uh, from that calendar data set. So then in this one here, I'm all I'm doing is replacing nulls 
uh, with a zero so that you know if there was no claims that day, I'm going to put a zero uh, for there so I don't have any nulls in my data set. Next thing is to create a rolling average. So you use the rank and window tile to do this. And I'm going to call my function rolling average, and I'm going to use the average uh, function, and I'm going to base it off the claims field. And then this, because I want a 90-day rolling average, I'm going to put 90 in here and then 1 over here. So this will always just generate then a 90-day rolling average. And you'll see that then created here. Uh, you can see that going going on and creating that 90-day rolling average based off of what's what the data looks like. I think the point, important point to point out here is the, uh, if we scroll down here, uh, once you apply that first part of the rolling average in the 90, then you need to order it by the date, and you're going to order it date ascending, and then you're going to partition by whatever your series. And again, in my case, mine's the, the line of business. So these two points are uh, very important for your uh, rank and window to work uh, properly and get that 90-day average. Then in here, so because some of the data in that um, way claims data works, or maybe any with your data, or you're dealing with um, email marketing campaigns, you're know, looking at um, delivery dates, whatnot, maybe this date in the current month is too new, so you don't want to necessarily use it. So I've created a, a new field called rolling average complete month. And what I'm saying here is saying, hey, when the date in that date in the data set is in the same month as the current date, then I want to null it out. I don't want a value to be be there. Otherwise, use the value in the rolling average. And you'll see how I make use of this field here once we get to the card. But if you want, to, this is this last day function. It's very helpful that it will then kind of move this date in, you know, July 14th. It's going to make it July 31st. And then uh, if today's date is July 28th, the last day function is going to make it July 31st. So then I, in 2023, so then I can easily say, hey, this is the same, uh, this is in the same month as our, our current day, uh, date. So I don't want to show it the data is too new. You could also do a, a date subtract uh, function and say, hey, maybe I don't want the last, so for the last 14 days or something like that. So you might want to adjust this depending on what you're needing to do. Uh, I'm going off of, a, I don't want it if it's in the current month. So then I've got that all created out, got those showing and I'll hop over here to my card now. So you see there with this card, so I've got this blue line for the general liability line of business and this green line for the uh, property line of business. And then you see it turns, looks like it turns gray here at the end because this is July in that current month. That's where I'm making, I'm kind of fading it out because it's not materialized yet. So. How do we go about doing that? Well, let's hop into the card and show you what that looks like. So I've got, I'm just using two of those line of businesses um, that you saw in my data. You saw there was like initially like seven or eight or something like that, but I'm just going to focus on two so the card's not too busy. We've got general liability and we've got property. And you see, I've got four fields in here. So I've got uh, this one about general liability and this one about general liability. And what do those look like? Well, if we look at this, I've kind of abbreviated rolling average general liability. So when the line of business is general liability, then use the rolling average um, value. So pretty simple here. And then the rolling average RACM, so the current month, when the line of business is general liability, then use the value from the rolling average complete month. And you saw that that was the uh, where I'm nulling out the values if the value's in July right now, because that's when we're, the current date is. So those two values are gonna be the exact same all the time until we get to um, that current month. And then the 
uh, value is null for those um, ones in the rolling average current month. So I put, it's important, the order is important. So you see this RACM is first, and that's that blue line, and then this is the uh, rolling average general liability, the one without the um, nulling of the dates. And all I'm doing is the color rule. So you see when you hover over here, they're the exact same, they're covering the exact same, they have the exact same values. So you see, so they're really overlapping. And so we make that kind of look like the same line because we're just using the same values and then nulling out those ends and then using the color rules. So saying, hey, for the rolling average general ability used, that's going to go all the way to the current date. Let's use a light gray for that. And then for the rolling average uh, complete month, where we're only doing those values up into the last uh, completed month, then we're going to do a dark blue. And same for property here. So we're doing a light gray that's going to run all the way to today. And then the green for that one that's just going to really end through the end of June because we're in July right now. So then as long as you put them in the correct order where you put the uh, colored one first and then you put the gray one second, then it'll line up and um, make this look like this and give you that appearance that it's really one line but changing colors uh, as it goes forward. But we're really, there's really two lines going on. So we're doing that for uh, property as well. So you could choose to hide the uh, labels or rename them if you wanted to. But uh, and the other thing I did just to make this um, a little more evident is that I chose the line thickness of thick. So then that makes uh, this show up a little bit uh, better, easier to see, certainly for this demonstration. So then you get that, and then people are able to see, oh, uh, this is not fully uh, materialized yet. So don't, you can see it, but not really trust that data yet because it's a little too new. So that's how you do rolling averages in Magic ATL and also show how you can kind of show the data, but show that it's not quite materialized yet using uh, some color rules with the multi-line chart. So hope you found that helpful and feel free to reach out if you have any questions. Thanks a lot.